Okay, so it's going to be a bit challenging with a microphone. Okay, so today I'm going to talk with you about the painful problem of data leakage. So, my name is Noel Altman. These days I'm writing my PhD in bioinformatics at Begui University of the Negev, and I'm also a senior data scientist at Intuit. Here is me, okay? Uh, yeah, just not, you know, to not being uh, nervous. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Of course, as I said, we are going to talk about data leakage. I'm going to give a lot of examples and I'm going to talk about the different types of data leakage and, of course, the most important, how to detect and avoid data leakage. Okay, so just a quick question. Who here knows Intuit? Hmm, okay. So I'll just say a few words about Intuit. Intuit is a business and financial software company that develops and sells products like uh, TurboTax. It's an American uh, tax preparation software. Uh, QuickBooks. QuickBooks is an accounting software for small businesses and self-employees. And Mint, this is really a great uh, app a great platform that aggregates all of your bank accounts, credit cards, loans, and investments in actually one user interface. So, as you can understand, the data Intuit holds is very confidential. We have a lot of sensitive um, and financial and personal data about our customer. And what I really love about Intuit is that Intuit believes that her customer belongs the data. Okay, so this is why Intuit puts a lot of effort uh, on fraud detection. Okay, so I'm done with the commercial uh, about Intuit. Okay, so let's go to our business data leakage. So this is actually the first project I worked on when I just arrived to Intuit. It was, uh, the, the purpose was to uh, predict uh, fraud events. I'm not going to talk a lot about this project because it's still going, but I wanted to use uh, this project as an example for uh, several uh, data leakages. Okay, so here in the, in the right, uh, you see a chart of fraud events by time. Okay, you can see here two peaks, okay? One a bit, uh, a small peak of fraud events and then a really big peak, okay? Something really strange happened uh, there. And if you don't have experience with time series, what you will want to do, okay, in order to build a model is to do tenfold cross validation because you are a really good data scientist, but actually it will be a mistake. Okay, why it will be a mistake? Because when you are dealing with time series, you don't want to use data from the future in order to predict the, the past. Okay, and this is actually what you are doing here. Okay, what could, could happen if you do that? Look at the really big peak you see here. Okay, let's say that you are um, using a features that, that uh, says what is the day of the month and let's say this peak happened on maybe the 6th of November, okay? So this peak is actually a rare event, but if you'll do 10 false cross-validation, you're actually leaking, okay, this rare event into your uh, model. The right thing to do is to uh, use timestamp and split your data by time, okay? First the training set, then the evaluation step uh, set, and then the test set. Just remember, first the train, then the, te then the evaluation, and then uh, the test. You can also uh, do walk forward um, evaluation, okay? So you're split splitting again to train and test, but for example, let's take the first 11 months as train and then the last one is test and then you're doing like a sliding windows, okay? And then calculating uh, average over all your uh, test set. So this is an example uh, for leakage in training data. Okay, so um, I'm going to give another example now, but we will go back to this fraud example later. This is another example for data leakage. This time we are talking about uh, prostate cancer. Okay, there was a competition 
uh, to trying to predict uh, prostate cancer in patients. And hidden among hundreds of feature, features was this feature, okay? And the meaning of this feature was not clear, but eventually it found out that this feature actually indicate whether the patient uh, had a prostate can cancer surgery. And this feature was very correlated, very predicted, predicted for the, for the target. So actually, this uh, feature is not legitimate to use in the model, okay? This is data leakage again. Uh, this type of data leakage is uh, leakage in features, leaking features, okay? And the reason is that this feature won't be available to the model in real life, okay? When you're doing diagnosis to, to a patient, okay, uh, you don't have this information available, okay? You didn't have the prostate cancer surgery yet. Okay, so after I gave you two examples for data leakage, uh, let's talk about uh, the exact definition of what that data leakage is. So the defini definition is a bit uh, vague, okay, I found a few definitions on papers and online. And the first uh, definition says that this is the use of illegitimate features. Uh, in your model, but what exactly is illegitimate? We don't know. Okay, so um, additional definition uh, talks about that the introduction of the illegitimate feature happens on the training data, and it's um, talking about unrealistic uh, results, uh, predictions of your model. And another definition uh, talk is talking about that, that this uh, leakage happens on the data preparation and aggregation, okay, on this step of the uh, uh, data science uh, process. But what I want you to remember, okay, that the data leakage is some uh, kind of information about the target that we are entering the training data that will uh, make our model make uh, unrealistic uh, predictions, okay, but then when we will go outside to the real world, the performance of the model will drop significant, uh, uh, significantly. Uh, it can be worse as a guess. What's the difference between that one to outlier? Because if you will do some outlier detection, we will find that, that you have a leakage. Uh, not always. Okay, I will go back to that. Uh, so, Data leakage can happen both in data science competitions, okay, and in re uh, real life. It actually happens a lot in the data science competitions. And if you discover a uh, data leakage uh, in a competition, so good for you, you can lead the leaderboard. And uh, but the problem starts when you are having a data leakage in real life. Okay, so uh, most of the examples that we'll talk about are from uh, data science competitions because when it happens in real life, most of the data scientists uh, don't report it, okay, they just uh, uh, find it and fix it and don't say anything to anyone. Uh, and, but the real uh, problem starts uh, when we are discovering data leakage uh, in models that are already running years in uh, production can be very harmful uh, to the company, it can cost a lot of money, and it, it can really harm uh, your career. So let's give additional examples for data leakage. Um, the first trivial example is uh, it's, uh, will rain on rainy days, okay? Uh, this is actually using the target as a feature, okay? So it's really trivial, but it can happen. Uh, the second example is when you are trying to predict which one of uh, the potential customers uh, will become a customer in your bank, okay? And, and you are uh, using uh, the bank account number in order to do that, okay? It's one of uh, your features, but actually uh, it's that data leakage because you are saying you are saying to your model, okay, if uh, a customer have a bank account number in your bank, so it's probably uh, will become a customer. And this is an example to data leakage in features. An additional example is a true story that 
happened in IBM. They will, again wanted to predict which one uh, of their uh, potential customers uh, will want to buy uh, some product that they uh, sell. And they used a keyword that appeared in the uh, customer website in order as one of your, uh, their uh, strongest features. Eventually, they found out that this keyword was in the customer website since uh, uh, some uh, press release okay, that uh, mentioned this keyword after these customers already bought uh, the product. Okay, so again, this is uh, an example of data leakage in features because uh, actually this uh, variable was created after these customers bought uh, the product. Okay, so let's give additional example. This is the big spender example. Okay, so let's uh, imagine that we own an online store and we want to predict uh, which one of our customer or new customers will become a big spender in the jewelry department. Okay, so we are using uh, the data we have about uh, product that were uh, bought in other departments. Okay, but what is the problem? Look at uh, customer 11125. Okay, so the model will uh, learn that if a customer didn't buy anything in any other department, so he's going to probably be uh, a big spender. So uh, what, the, what the model learned is actually a mistake. So again, this is a leakage in feature problem. Okay, so after we gave uh, a lot of examples, so let's talk more specifically what are the type, uh, the different type of data leakage. So the first type is uh, leakage in training data. Um, I'm reminding you uh, the fraud detection example. Okay, we need to split properly our training, testing, and evaluation evalu evaluation data sets. Uh, Okay, so we are uh, looking at uh, uh, no time machine requirements. Okay, you need to remember the train needs to happen before uh, the test and evaluation when we are, we are talking about uh, time series. Um, another um, leakage can happen when you're doing your pre-processing. For example, if you are doing a normalization, okay, if, for example, you want to uh, use deep learning, so you need to do the normaliza normalization not on your old data set, okay, but only on the training set and then on the test set separately, okay? When you are starting to work on your data set, just split it and take the test set and put it aside, don't touch it, okay, and don't be uh, tempted to touch it because what will happen if you will do uh, the normalization on all your data set, then, uh, for example, if you'll do a uh, Z-score normalization, you will leak information about um, the average of the samples in the test that you leak it into the train set. Okay, so be careful with it. The second type of data leakage is, as I uh, already mentioned, is leakage uh, in features. Okay, and here the no time machine requirement uh, also uh, is very important. Okay, and the most problematic thing is that we, uh, a lot of time we are using data from data warehouse. And uh, the problem with data warehouse is that uh, some variables can be updated. And you don't know if the update happened after the target was labeled. So I'll give you another example uh, from the fraud detection problem I worked on. So, um, think if you have, uh, for example, a feature that indicates if the user tried to uh, connect to a server, okay? So, it tried on the first time and it failed, and then it tried on the second time and it failed again, and then it tried on the third time and failed again and again, and eventually he was uh, succeeded, okay? It, it is clear to connect to the service. Uh, so, now this feature indicates uh, success, okay? But uh, this will be a leakage because in the point of time you are trying to predict, maybe you are trying to predict it on the third, third time that you try to connect to the uh, service, in this point it still didn't happen. So it's really problematic because you don't know exactly if your features 
are updated before or after uh, the target. So it's also problematic and you need to uh, pay attention. Uh, okay, again, uh, be very careful okay, when you are implement implementing missing uh, values. Uh, missing values, as I uh, showed, uh, can also cause uh, data leakage. So you need to be very uh, careful with them. Okay, so let's give an example, another example. Okay, this example is a bit controversial, okay? So let's see it before and then we'll talk about it. He want to predict if this image contain a dog or a wolf, okay? So if this is my training data, okay? Uh, let's say we have only four photos, I don't know. Uh, so our model will learn that if the background is white, so the image is an image of a wolf, and if the background is green, then it's an image of a dog, okay? So you can claim and say, yes, this is a data leakage, and you can say, no, it's not a data leakage. So it can be also a data leakage, it can be a generalization problem, and it can even be a very bad preparation uh, of your data set, okay? It depends how you are looking on it, but I just want it to be on your mind that yes, it can be also a data leakage, and it depends uh, how you determine uh, your goals from this model. So let's give an, uh, another example. I promised you a lot of examples, okay? So this is from a comp competition uh, that the uh, uh, um, data scientist had to predict whether uh, sound recording contains sounds of whales or not. So one uh, user found a lot of uh, leakage in this data set. The first leakage was the length uh, of the recording. Okay, the length of the whales was different from the length of the non-whales uh, recording. Additional data leakage was in the name of the file. The name of the file contained uh, the timestamp of this recording and he found out that all the whales files, uh, the last digit is zero. Okay, uh, with respect to the non well all the uh, digits uh, were present. And the last thing that happened, the last data, data linkage, was in the test set. When he ordered the um, test samples by time, okay, he, he found out that all the whales recording are clustered together. Okay, so he sent an email uh, to the organizer of this competition and they uh, fixed most of the problem and released this data set again. Okay, so let's talk a bit about uh, how to detect and avoid uh, data leakage. So, uh, as I already said, first thing you can do is to split your data set into training and uh, testing and take your test set and put it aside and don't touch it until the end if you can afford it, of course, if you have uh, enough data. The second thing you can do is data exploration, okay? Explore your data, understand your variable, look for suspicious things, okay? You can check correlation of all your variables with your target variable, okay? And to see if you, uh, you are seeing a very high correlation with the target variable um, and check what is the meaning of this variable. And additional things to, re thing to remember is when, as I said already, when you're doing the Pre-processing, don't do it on the entire data set together. And after you are building your model, okay, look for surprises, okay? I recommend first maybe to use a simple model like decision tree, okay, or a simple regression. You can look on the information gain of the features and look for a feature that maybe its information uh, gain is very, very high with respect to other features and check what is the meaning of this feature and why is the information getting so high or uh, if you are doing, doing a prediction problem, look on the covariant of the regression. And if the performance of your model are really unrealistic and very, very high, if it happens on the evaluation uh, set or on the test set, so it might be overfitting, but if it will happen on uh, real da data, okay, so it might be uh, data leakage and 
uh, it's a bit problematic because if you can go back to your raw data and maybe start all over all over again so it might be a solution but not always you have this solution okay maybe you didn't collect the the data okay maybe you are using uh, data from uh, the internet or um, data that someone else in your company prepared then you don't know how we prepared it okay so the best advice I can give you is uh, just earn as much as you can uh, domain knowledge. Understand your feature, understand what is the meaning of your variables. Okay, if you are working on a medical problem, so uh, meet as much as you can with the doc doctor you are working with and try to under really, really understand what is the meaning of your data. And what uh, we in Intuit uh, really love to do is something that we are calling follow me home. Okay, follow me home. We are really love to meet with our customers and understand what are they pro uh, the problem they have and how can we help them. And in my team, we, are sta we started to do something that we call follow me office. Okay, actually what we are doing, we are meeting, okay, maybe once a week. Uh, with our customers. Who are our customers? Uh, our customers as a data scientist, okay, is people from other departments, uh, other business units that we are working with, okay? So we are meeting with them, we really, really get into our data. We are really trying to understand what are they pro the, the pro problem they are facing with and exactly what the data means. And we hope that this will help us uh, to avoid uh, data leakage in the future. That's it. Thank you very much. And if you have